TI-83, TI-84 calculator includes the capability of creating your own programs for functions that are not pre-built into the calculator. So there are a series of programming options that you can engage to shorten the workload for yourself and let the calculator do some of the heavy lifting for you. Now, as you might imagine, if we are typing a new program into the calculator, it makes sense to begin our work in the pro with the program button. So right here in the middle of the calculator is the program button. We're going to start there. Depending on the nature of your calculator, you might have a menu that looks a little bit different than this, but we are going to do our programming in the basic section of the Texas Instruments calculator. At this point, we don't have any programs, or if you have a program that's already pre-built or pre-loaded, we can skip past that and arrow over to new, and we are going to create a new program in our calculator. This program is going to be designed as an example, but for the purposes of doing the quadratic formula for us. So your name should reflect the program itself. In the namespace, you'll see that the cursor is flashing with the letter A. That means we are already queued up to use the alpha or the alphabet options in our calculator. For the sake of simplicity, and I don't have a ton of characters available to me, we're just going to name our function quad form. So we find Q-U-A-D, we find F-O-R-M, and as you would for any other situation on the calculator, you can arrow back and type over anything if you make a mistake. And then press enter. Next to each of these colons are where we are going to put our commands for the program. Now the quadratic formula requires that our, that our quadratic equation is already in standard form. Because it's in standard form, we would be able to identify our a, b, and c, the quadratic coefficient, the linear coefficient, and the constant at the end. So our program is going to simply ask the user for those pieces of information. So what is your a, what is your b, and what is your c? Now to get to the program options, we're gonna press program one more time And because we are inside the de design of the program, this looks a little bit different. These are all of our programming pre-built functions. We have if-then statements, we have else's, we have whiles and repeats. And if we go over one category to the I-O or the input-output, we can scroll down to prompt, which is what TI uses when it wants to ask the user for an input. So we're gonna prompt the user for a few inputs. We're gonna prompt them for the input A. So we're gonna to have to press alpha A. When you wanna separate prompts, you use a comma, which is right here above the seven. We're gonna ask for their B, and we're gonna ask for their C. So we are going to ask our user to input their A, their B, and their C. We press enter, and now we're on the second line of our code. In the second line of our code, that's where we're gonna tell the calculator to do the actual mathematics of the quadratic formula. Now the tricky part is, we have to tell the calculator a couple of different things. Because there's two versions of the formula, inside of the one with the plus minus symbol, we're gonna separate that into two separate steps. So in our first step, we're gonna say, open up a parentheses, this is gonna be for the numerator of the quadratic formula, negative B, just as we always start, and on this first line, we're gonna use the plus sign. And then we're gonna do this again with the minus sign. Our next option is the, or our next Part of the formula is the square root. Then we're going to say b squared minus 
for a C. That first parentheses closure closes the square root. Then we're going to close another one for the whole top. And then we're going to divide by the denominator to A. Because you already asked the user for A, B, and C, the calculator knows what those values are. It's just going to drop them into those spots and tell us what the value is. The calculator has a function called the store function. It has its own button down here on the left, STO with the arrow. That store function is where is tells the calculator where to put that number. So once it's done with all of that math, where are you going to store that value so I can show it to the user? So I click it and you'll see an arrow comes up. I just need to call another variable up. So I'm going to call up the variable x to say that's my first solution. So my first solution is going to come from doing that mathematics with the a, b, and c and storing it in y. And then very similarly, we're going to have the exact same thing just with a minus sign in it for the second part of the formula. where I calculate the other root of the quadratic equation. Oh, whoops, excuse me. Sorry about that, I exited out of it. But you can see the key se sequence to get back into it. It's an automatic save. So if you back out of it by accident, no big deal. I'm going to arrow back to the end after my accidental keystroke. And then we're going to store this somewhere else. We don't want to store it back on top of x. x is the first root. I, I went through all of this mathematics to call x the first root. I'm not going to rename it or name it x again. It's just going to, it would just copy over that value. So this one we're going to call y. So I take my two iterances of the quadratic formula, one with the plus sign and one with the minus sign. I write out all of the steps in detail. I make sure I use my parentheses so that the order of operations happens in the right sequence. And then I take those values and I store them in two variables. It's these two variables that we're going to tell the calculator that we want to see at the end because those are going to be our two answers. So we enter to the next line. And on the next line, we're going to have the calculator display those two values. So again, we're going to press program. Again, we're going to go into input output. And this time, we're going to go down to display, which is option number three. If you want the calculator to just show words, you have to put them inside of quotation marks. Words will not show up. The calculator will try to do math if you put a bunch of letters together, like here, like in these two steps, if you put a bunch of letters together, the calculator is going to try to do the math. So instead, we very carefully, inside of a quotation mark, type roots. Because we are saying these, gonna, these are going to be my two answers. These are going to be the roots of the equation. And we're going to close the parentheses. Or excuse me, close the quotation marks. Now, because we want the calculator to give us back those x and y variables, we're going to bring back our commas, and we're going to say, show me x, and show me y. Because they are all on that display line. Because they're on that display line, the calculator will show me those when it's done. Now we press enter to say we're done, and now we can use our quadratic formula equation. The quadratic formula, lots of steps to do it by hand, maybe the calculator can do it for us. So let's exit back out to the very main, the main screen. Let's go back into program, 
back into TI Basic, and now we're going to execute EXEC, our quadratic formula, uh, uh, cal excuse me, calculator program. We press enter, and now I'm being prompted for A, B, and C. So we want to pick one that we know works. If it doesn't work and you choose values for A, B, and C that do not have any real solutions, the calculator will tell you. But we want to choose some values that we know are going to work. So we want to choose one that we know is going to have an answer and ideally two unique answers. So I'm going to go with x squared minus 2x minus 8 as my as my quadratic. Negative 2. Whoops. Don't want to use the minus sign. My value for b is negative 2 and my value for c is negative 8. So I have a is 1, b is negative 2, c is negative 8. This is the quadratic equation x squared minus 2x minus 8. I press enter and my two roots are 4 and negative 2, which is exactly what I would suspect. So the quadratic formula fo program in the calculator shortens that work for you by hand. It's a nice little trick to have and a nice little tool to have, and a hopefully a nice exposure to the kind of programming that you can do in your calculator.